there's a pattern that I find really disturbing my friend. And it's how that whenever there is some sort of high-profile death, it seems that there is also someone out there who's either celebrating or saying good riddance. Or maybe now that a person is dead, there's all the dirt that is now being brought out into the open, or is supposedly being brought out into the open. And that has always kind of felt off, off to me. And maybe that just has to do with my perspective on due to faith in that someone's eternity has been decided. So there's a bit of somberness that is there because there's sometimes an unknowing of how that actually turned out. But there are two avenues of thought I want to talk about that I think not only reveal a little bit about that pattern and why it happens, but also reveals how stories can actually affirm it or actually challenge it. And let's begin with othering and distance, because it's a very easy thing to do. Especially if someone watches the news a lot, it may actually be the only way for them to remain sane in a sense. Because if it's not affecting anyone we know, then we don't really have to think about it. We don't have to feel that it's going on in a sense. We may know it's going on, but we don't have to feel intimately that something is going on. Or maybe we're trading distance in a relationship because it seems like it's about to end, so we're trying to protect ourselves. And sometimes that is actually the opposite of what we could actually be doing to save the relationship and trying to reach out into net, but instead we're protecting ourselves. And again, sometimes it's actually healthy for a relationship to end. But there's also danger there in that we can be easy to then put someone into an othering situation. And when I talked about othering, it's not just an acknowledgement that someone is different, but it's putting everything to an us versus them proposition. And because once that happens, it's easy to then go into the situation where those we see as being the them start being treated as less than human. Which not only leads to basically a dull mine of potential story ideas, but there are actually studies that almost affirm this in how easy it is for people to start to go down this road of treating someone less than humanely simply because of what they were told by someone else. Emphasis on told rather than observation or knowledge. Which is a pretty scary thought and probably a really easy trigger for like dystopian fiction that people like to read about. But again, it's like there may be someone that they trust to give them an accurate statement, but it's actually what they're told is not the right thing. And even then, sometimes the studies have also shown that when there is dissent from someone, then it's also easier for them to dissent as well. So there's a lot of ideas there that probably to be considered. But now that we've covered othering and distance, let's talk about how most stories and or characters seem to have one of three ideas or philosophies when it comes to the value of life, at least in stories where there's going to be violence. The first is basically anything goes. And pretty much all that matters in this case is what accomplishes a dole, no matter what else. So little to no value is placed on life, unless that life is, actually matters to the dole. Now, a very easy comparison is to how most people apparently play GTA or other crime fiction. But there is also something of a survival take, where it's the individual or the group that takes precedence over any outsiders. So like someone may be setting all the parties against each other just so try and make themselves come off, or they might be switching back and forth depending on what's most convenient for them. Or there's also the kind of ones where it's the family that comes first. There may be others we help out, but it's always the family that we will cling to and so forth and choose. The second kind of philosophy is that it gets easier. In this state, there's an acknowledgement of life, but it's also this encouragement to get hardened because that's needed. It's basically this encouraging of numbness or desensitizing to the violence that has been committed. And this is very easy to include in some people's coming of age stories or even other survival stories, especially coming of age in survival situations. But then we come to the third philosophy or idea, which is kind of the complete opposite of both of those, in that you don't let it become easier. In fact, depending on the story, it may even be considered impossible to, even though history has refuted that time and again. 
With this philosophy, while violence may be necessary, it is never the first option and only a last resort. To paraphrase Tolton, sometimes the greater courage is knowing when to spare a life. There's kind of the strength in being able to say, yeah, you may bat stab me, but I'm going to give you the chance anyway, a second chance anyway. And it's just sort of a different way of looking at life in the world that a lot of people may not actually think about. Another thought to really think about is that love is not easily provoked, meaning it certainly can be. And again, it's not love's natural state to be provoked all the time or to be angry at the slightest hint of someone disagreeing with you. But real love should never be treated as being completely passive in its response to seeing a wall on. It's kind of that Papa Worth and Mama Bear side that will come out when someone threatens their kids. It's just kind of something that we almost expect in a way. And it's actually easy to kind of bring this back full circle to the othering and distance. And that as humans, we have a desire to see things made right, for justice to be done, for the scales to be balanced. But due to human nature, it is often our perspective of justice that we want to see made manifest, which may not actually be objective justice or even similar to someone else's. Which I guess actually makes this one of those topics that are perfect for those deep discussions with true friends that help us understand each other a bit more. Or the stories that will actually make us question our views on the world. Just take those three philosophies for example. You can have a character trying to live out number three in a number one world. Or you can have someone encouraging number two in a story that is actually calling and showing that number three is the way you're actually supposed to see things. And I think that's actually where I'll leave this for now. But what do you think about this topic? Do you see the same pattern that I have? Or maybe you just find this an interesting question to see in stories. Why not share your thoughts in the comments below? And if you like this video, why not share it with someone you think will as well? Anyway, I'm Jonah. You've been watching Lions Man Media, where we celebrate stories and lessons we learn from them. Talk to you later, and have a great rest of your day.